Here we go. We are now recording. Now we can begin. Steve, I'll let you take it. Well, welcome everybody uh, to our February 2021 shop talk. We're glad you're here. Um, we've got some exciting things that we're going to talk about. And D. Jin from um, Autodesk is first up. And D, tell us a little bit about what's going on with Fusion and the cloud and everything else. Yeah, so I have a great news to share with all of you. And um, so since last year, uh, since COVID, a lot of students started learning from, from home. And then uh, because of devices they have, a lot of, a lot of students um, complained about they, they couldn't access Fusion using their Chromebook or other um, uh, less, uh, new, less, less newer, like older laptops. And then, so since then we'll be working internally to try to solve this issue for, um, for the students. And then, um, like I know last year we launched a solution for Fusion for Chromebooks specifically. And then today I'm very happy to announce that Fusion now you can use any computer to access online, meaning there's no more, uh, you don't need to download anymore. Uh, of course, if you want to download, you can still download and use Fusion in the, in the uh, old way. But uh, if you don't want to, you don't have to. So any computer with, with the physical lap, um, keyboard, meaning that excludes um, tablets and phones. And so any other computers and Mac, PC, um, you, can, you can access Fusion on um, using, just using a browser. And then I'm going to put a link here in the chat. So this is a link you're going to access. You still need to have a verified education license. And this solution is only open to education users. Like if you're commercial users, um, commercial license users, you're not able to use this solution. It's only for educators and students. Um, Is it print with a watermark or is it just print normal? I think the print still with a watermark. I don't think that got changed. Okay. Yeah, and then if you want to see more, um, if you have more, want to see more details, you can go to the second link I just sent to the chat. Um, there's, it's a FAQ page. You can find a lot of uh, common questions to be answered. Well, I think this is exciting news. Anybody else have any comments on what Autodesk is trying to do to help the education community? Um, uh, we, I do. We, let's hear it. Uh, this is Rob Hayworth from Laguna Creek High School. And I've been using the, the Fusion uh, for Chromebooks online for the last mm, two months. And it has been absolutely amazing. Um, I have, you know, I have like 40 kids that are able to do this at home without needing to download it on a PC and stuff. And so D, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's awesome and it is perfect. Yeah, I'm really happy to hear Rob. Um, so yeah, we've been hearing similar feedback. A lot of people concerned about performance, but based on the feedback we've been hearing, uh, the performance has been doing pretty well. And then we're continuously uh, working on the back end to improve the performance. So um, I'm also open to hear any feedback. If you try the solution, let me know uh, what's your experience and where you get stuck. Uh, let me know and then we're gonna to continue to improve. See, the first link doesn't work. The second link does. Yeah, I noticed, um, I, I wonder, so that's a correct link, but there might be some, uh, some hiccup on our end. Um, I'm gonna ping our engineer real quick and then see, but that's, that should be the correct link. Hey D, this is Matt hey. Wynn. Mm -hmm. um, hey, I have a question for you. Um, we've been using Fusion 360 the whole school year. It's great. Uh, and we like the, the, the actual access with the Chromebooks. Um, the one thing I, I do have, though, is on Chromebooks, obviously, you can't download anything. So the option to turn a drawing into a PDF, um, it would really be nice if somehow there was an option to go ahead and be able to upload that to either their Google Drive or something like that. Because not all of our students have like a thumb drive that they can put in their Chromebook and download their drawings in uh, PDF form. Okay. Just something to think about. Yeah, so um, Mr. Wynn, would you mind uh, sending me an email? I just put my email address in the chat. If you can send me the email with your, uh, if you, with your feedback, I'll make sure to forward it to the right person. Okay, I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then the first link, I don't know why it doesn't work, but when I click the, the uh, the most recent link I sent to the chat, that one links, but that's to the same place. Hey, D, uh, this is Rob Hayworth again. Um, I'd like to piggyback on what Matt suggested and say also kind of the 
opposite direction would be helpful too. Like if kids are going to be inserting a canvas into a, into a model, it would, mm -hmm. they, it, it's quite a workaround to use the, like the web portal to fusion. Uh, you can do it that way, but it would be nice if that would then, if you did do insert a canvas, if it would give your Google drive as an option. Okay. So Rob, I also need the same help for you to send me an email and then with what you just said, is that okay? Will do. Yeah, thank you. I just want to make sure I capture your uh, comment correctly. Okay. Thanks. So anybody else have any comments for Dee? Because I've got something I want to throw at you as well, Dee, but I want everybody else to comment. Faith, Alicia, Alex, anything? I've really appreciated all the support because I know before the web, the Chromebook solution was there, I had a virtual machine that we were working off of and we got it working eventually. <laughs> it took a lot of work, but now it's so awesome. So I really appreciate it. And now that it's available on all computers, it's just so nice that everyone has the same link. Yeah. Instead of just like some kids with Chromebooks, this is, and then people with, with your own computer, you do this. So it's been really great. Thank you for your help. Yeah, great, Faith. So Dee, have you been in, had any discussion with Tim Paul who can't make this call because he's, he's leading another training this afternoon about a, an Autodesk supported community for educators using Chromebooks and Fusion 360? So he did give me a very brief heads up of uh, what it was, but I don't have more details than what he just said. Okay. So for those of you on the call, Tim and I have been discussing offline and he said that Dee's the one, she has the, uh, she can throw around her weight and make things happen at Autodesk. But I think it'd be really cool if we had a moderated forum for teachers using Fusion on Chromebooks or whatever. And some of the workarounds that you have found as far as submitting drawings, turning them into PDFs, whatever, and lessons related to that. And so hopefully, I was hoping we could announce something today, but Tim is, he hasn't gotten enough traction yet with the out of the desk people. And so now that D's in the loop, I'm confident D that this is gonna happen before the end of March. What do you think? Um, I will, so Steve, I'm happy to support for the things you wanna do like, like always, um, but I will, need to, I will need a little bit more details. Maybe we can talk offline. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like if, if you want to, if this is the right forum to talk about, uh, what are you trying to achieve? And then who will be the people who uh, will be participating in this session? Uh, who else would you like to include in this uh, meetings? Well, so just real fast, not to take up Randy's time here real fast, but as I have listened to these shop talks and as almost as Faith has talked about the evolution of fusion and working with in Chromebooks and different teachers have said, well, I do this or I try this, right? Bump, bump, bump. I think it'd be really cool, not just for our small group here in the greater Sacramento region, but what uh -huh. about nationwide or what have you? If we had a forum out there, we get ideas from people from, shall we say the mountain states or from the East Coast or the plain states, everybody's got different ways of doing things. And so that's where, you know, cause I know Autodesk has forums for different products that you guys, different software products you guys have out there. What about one specifically for teachers who are using Chromebooks and Fusion and some of the issues they run into, but also some of the successes they have? Oh, so the forum you were talking about here is more like a um, discussion forum. It's not a live um, meeting Correct. discussion. Okay, I see what Correct. you mean. Well, okay. so I just think everybody could benefit from it and we could all learn together. Plus it would help, I think Autodesk and your engineers developing uh, the software package. Yeah, okay. So that's just my wild thought for February. Okay, okay. let me, let me uh, circle this idea internally and then we'll get back to you. Okay. It would be a great way to upvote uh, ideas like having the direct Google Drive link and things like that. Okay. Yeah, it'd be a place for a teacher could go to, regardless, and they're using Fusion in their classroom, or the community college or high school, and they can get some cool ideas and implement it and makes, makes their life so much easier and it's so much better for the students too. 
Yeah, yeah, I see what I mean. Actually, this could be a more like fusion forum for all educators. Correct. That's exactly what I'm looking for. for yeah. People. Okay. Well, with that said, Randy, let's let's, let's rotate over to you now. Because Randy shared something with me, oh gosh, two or three weeks ago about this, this simulator for machining, but he's got other simulators too that they're developing there in the program at American River College. And so and I, I sent out the link that you sent to me that with the eight or nine minute video on what it is to the people, to the invitees of this call. Randy, I, I was hoping instead of having you go through step by step, give a presentation, show us what you guys are doing. I think it's very exciting. And it's something that I had my high school grandsons work with. They thought it was the coolest thing since sliced bread. So, Randy? Cool. What's going on? Um, let me go ahead and share my screen. I think I've got the right one there. I don't think I need audio. And I can never tell what that you're seeing my screen now, right? I can so, see it blank. Is it blinking or is it okay? No, no, no. It's not okay. Good. I'm not having a flashback, man. It looks great. Okay, so that's cool. So actually, um, let me go ahead and just put this link in the chat because this is a live, a live link now that we've got. And now how do I get to the chat um, when I'm sharing my screen? Anybody know how to do that? Um, go to the top control panel and there's three dots I'm, I'm looking for i don't even see the control panel oh sometimes you have to take the cursor either all the way to the top of the screen and then it'll drop down or all the way to the bottom of the screen it'll pop up ah, all i see is your little window of you guys and i see my screen up there oh there it is got it okay uh so down there and, and more chat. There we go. There we go. So uh, there's that one. And let me give you the sharing link to this one too, so that you can get to all of our stuff if you want to. And what I'm hoping to do is just show you some cool stuff and then get your feedback. It's like, what do you want to do with it? What can we do? So we've got a group right now. We've got two unity programmers, two or three modelers in the fall. We'll probably triple or quadruple that. Uh, we are recruiting, uh, any of you that have high school students that will be coming to community college. We want them in the design hub. And our understanding is we will be back to giving paid internships in the fall. Um, so that's what we're hoping for. We need unity programmers, but we've got, we, we, we're kind of doing a whole bunch of programming work, but the one that struck me first or second actually was our milling simulator because I'm teaching the class. Alex has taken it as a matter of fact, and it's a design class and it's hard to design if you don't know how to make what you're designing. So it's a very simple sim. You can move the head, okay? You can re-zero the tool center. You have to enter Z. You can check your tool diameter. Um, you can measure the part and you can give yourself some target points. Maybe you want a block that's 3.5 by 3.5. And then of course, as soon as you're ready to cut, you turn the power on you can adjust your travel speed and you start cutting. And we've got it set so it doesn't cut really fast because um, that's the way the old manual mills work. We kind of, tell you the truth, I, I told the guy to go look at our bridge port that we rebuilt four or five times. That's why the digitals are in inches and the tool diameters are all in millimeters and so is the speed. Because that's actually the equipment that we rebuilt our bridge port with. So, so it's kind of kooky, but that's the way it is. But you can actually run a cut. You can um, rotate the you can rotate the bed if you want. You can set how far you want to rotate it. So you've got 
some control that you can mill with. And the idea, of course, is before you get a kid on a mill, they practice those, they practice the thought process of running a mill. Okay. And so this is available to you. And what I was hoping to do with this is after I, I mean, I think all of you have kind of run something like this that are on here. Most of you are shop teachers. So this is kind of like, yeah, I got it. That's kind of like what it is. I, I wish I had a crank handle. You know, if I had a really cool, you know, Game Boy controller with a wheel that I could crank, that would be even better, but I don't. So um, this is what we've got. But we have the XYZ, XY controls. We don't have the third dimension yet. So the way this thing works, as soon as this hits the part, this is one block and it's um, 100 mil by 100 mil by 100 mil. It's one, but it's, it's one piece. As soon as the mill touches it, wherever it touches, it voxelizes that into uh, one millimeter blocks. And then if it's still touching, it goes into a half millimeter block and then down into a one tenth millimeter block. And so you can imagine as this thing is running, it's creating little blocks as you go. Well, if we go into three dimensions, you know, where it's two times two times two, we have eight times that many. And our WebGL interface won't handle it. Our big dog computer can do it, but a WebGL won't. And so just the way we do this, this it's real-time cutting we can't do too much more than the two directions. You'll also find, and Alex, you probably saw this, sometimes you're off by four or five thousandths of an inch and sometimes you're exact, right? That's got to do with the size of your milling cutter, how fast you're sitting there running. And um, because as you voxelize, it's got to sit there and Sounds actually good. get rid of those parts. So, so that's how this thing works. What we're doing right now, last week, we just cut a block and I timed it or I asked people to report their times. And most of them were in, you know, uh, they were cutting down to about between three and three and three quarters. And most people were taking half an hour to 45 minutes to do their cut. Uh, this week, they're gonna have to do a cut out and next week, they're going to have to do a cut out with a chamfer. And then the following week, it'll be a cut out with a chamfer with a round hole. And so they're going to have to do their tool offset and make the round hole. After they've done that, I figure they've got the ability to do their stuff. And our thought is, and you can do all of that with what we've got here. Our next step is either to go 3D or to be able to flip the part stand it on end so that you can still kind of do 3D-ish work. So, so this is just a very simple sim that's available to you all. And I guess what I'm looking for is if you want to play with it or whatever, or if you've got some feedback, what do you need to see? Do you need to see a fly cutter? Do you need to see a milling cutter to a certain depth? Uh, because we could do that. We could um basically we could make this 3d if our cut depth was always fixed and we said okay you're always gonna do a cut depth of a quarter inch then we could build this block out of quarter inch blocks and just say how many of those we're going through so there's things that we could do and we're just interested to hear how you would use it you know cut square things cut chamfers that one of the first things that we've got to do is figure out um, how to re-zero the tool. So, you know, if you come over here, let me, um, right, if I do this and then I get us moving backwards a bit, how do I zero the tool? And by the way, it measures across the, the lines. We don't really have a measurement 
tool yet. And we could program one of those. But for what I'm looking to do with students, this is kind of enough. So you can see, I could just barely take a cut and I could re-zero my tool. And now I can do my calculations to either go to a larger diameter and take a cut or move over. So it's just a process, right? It's just thinking through the manual milling process. Another thing that we're going to do if we get there is we're going to kind of write our own G code. So in other words, a student will say, okay, zero down here and then run with this size mill up to here, uh, run over to here, run down to here, run down to here and write their G code and let another student run the part off of that essentially X, Y set of coordinates. So those are the things that we're thinking of doing with it. We've only had it up online for about two weeks. So what do you guys think? Is that a useful tool to you? I know I'm gonna use it. Cool, yeah. So <laughs> uh, I'm looking for the chat again. Uh, oh, it's way over there. There we go. Okay, now I got the now I got the chat up. So so you've all got the link and you're welcome to use it. It's on WebGL, so it works on Windows, Mac, Linux, and um, and Chromebook. It actually works on a phone too, but it's really hard. It's it's I don't think. I don't think a kid can really do it on a phone, but it's web G my phone. It didn't work that well. Yeah. <laughs> so I think somebody could see it. Oh, and, and, and you can take a screen capture of what you've got. So that's, this is, this is what I have the students turn in when they're done. Just send me the screen capture of what their finished part was. And if they measured it, so like, now, now you can see there's the measure from there to there. So it's pretty hard to, um, it's pretty hard to mess that up, right? You just, you know, if you know where it measures and you set your part up so that the key measurements come across those points, you can quickly and easily get these. And then, um, you know, you're just, you're just reading, these and I use an Excel spreadsheet to give each student their own measured parts so that everybody has to do a different everybody has to do a different thing. Yeah. You said it's pretty hard to mess this up. You must have better students than I do. Oh uh, no. So what, what I mean by mess it up is they can't break this because it's WebGL. They can do whatever they want to this. Um, but this is just up on our power server, so it's it's safe. They they can't download. They can't. Well, they might be able to hack it. If you've got a kid that can hack this, we want it. Um, <laughs> that would be that would be that would be really cool. Um, you can mess up the part really easy. Man, I've taken too big of a bite, and I added some track wrong. And the other cool thing is you can pull your calculator up. Do some quick calculators, pull it down, and then run your part. So I run the calculator. I could see how if all they're doing is running it on a Chromebook, it's like, you know, I'm on my 34-inch second screen while I'm talking to you guys on this screen. So a second screen is really a benefit. But um, I did run it on my Chromebook. I have a Chromebook here so I can test everything. And it did work. Alex, what, how did you do with it? Um, <clears throat> I use it on my desktop, but what I was going to say um, more about the tool itself is that it's really nice, the angle, because when you actually use a CNC machine, you're not directly above the part looking at it. So this actually visually makes more sense to learn how much to shave off, because even if you had the actual uh, tooling in front of you, you wouldn't be able to see actually what's happening um, as much right. as that. So that that was useful. And yeah, it's I, for me learning. I mean, it's 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 hard to wrap my mind around how to do the calculations and whatnot. 
but um, no, I, I think it's a great tool, at least that way to conceptualize how, you know, a laser cutter or a CNC machine would work in, in real right. life. So I think it's a great tool in that regard. And you don't have the cost of messing up parts or stock materials. Too, yep. so. <laughs> yeah. And so this is, I was telling Jeff uh, earlier that we're looking at for the fall, we're hoping that our impossible to convert classes come in. And one of the strategies is to have um, students go through pre-training on something like this before they actually come in and get on the mill. So if they're, if it's a 45 hour lab, they'll be recopied. I can, oh, there we go. Um, but we'd, we'd have a chance to be able to give them some pre-training with that. I just, I wanna show you a couple of other quick things that we've got. We've got a surveying sim also. Yeah, I, and I don't know if any of you use this, uh, surveying in your classes, but it's just WASD keys. And I can actually um, put down a rod. Let's see if I can remember how to put down a rod. So I put down a rod over there. And if I get close enough to it, I can read its XYZ position. Or if I want to use a site to look at it, I can actually, oh, I don't know if I put it in a good spot. Oh, there it is. I can actually get uh, my rod reading, that's the 3.6. My distance from my, my sight to the rod and my azimuth angle reading on the rod. And so we use this because I couldn't get out with survey equipment. We use this and, and I gave them these brown lines were um, um, traverses that we needed to run. The little fence around it was just so they didn't wander off the face of the earth of my site. But you could, you could literally, you could, you, could, um, you, could, you could run a survey. And once they got their data points and they could draw it, and once they could draw it, they could model it. And once they could model it, they could, you know, do their cut and fill and that kind of stuff. So I'm not sure if any of you do survey type work, but if you need good, solid, basic engineering, and it's all just plus and minus from a level site, right? Or you can have them draw X, Y, Z positions and actually go in here. And the way we did this is I had teams of three. One student had this showing and they were sharing their screen uh, and they were working. Another student was taking the recordings of the data and the third student was actually drawing it as they went. And so they, they were working in a team of three to do a survey and we did the survey of this site, which is about four or 500 feet. And it's got a weird shape to it and things like that. Uh, it would take about an hour and a half or two hours. Whereas in, you know, in real life, it would be a full day to do it, but it was still at least something. And I had them do screen record so that I could actually watch them doing their work as we were, as we were doing it. So that's another one that we that we thought was really super useful for us last semester. This semester we're doing the machine sim, and the semester before when we were shut down, we were teaching a drone class, and um, we we actually had to make a drone flight simulator, and this thing works pretty well. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I can, let, let me see if I got it on here. Um, unfortunately, my computer freaks out when I run, um, this is a school computer and they have, um, they have Steam products locked out, Unity products locked out. Uh, so I don't think I can show you this one right off the bat. Uh, I don't know where I've got it. Um, but, but there's a Windows version and a Mac version, and there's a whole bunch of things you can do. There's just learn the controls. Uh, you can run it off of a keyboard. You can run it off of a switch or a Game Boy. 
I think, or the three different controllers you can use it on. And then we have a landing pattern and we have hoops that you can fly through. Uh, so there's three or four things that we can do. But we like it. It was really, really interesting. And we had, I think we had eight students taking that class and three of them have since gotten their, their license. They've got their part uh, 107 license and are flying jobs. Uh, because they got their initial training with this. And so I don't know if any of you have uh, drone programs going on either. But if you do, of course, they can't be flying the drones around, but they could be doing this so when they get to your school, you've got, you've, you've got them trained basically at least in the stick functions of what's going on. So those are three of the... Um, Three of the things that we've got going. We're also able to make virtual tours for people, uh, but you have to give us the 360 panorama uh, view because right now our interns are not allowed to go out and take shots for you. Um, we've got a survey and drone activity involved. Oh, we've got the coolest Minecraft faith. It's almost online. This is. We've, we've got it for you. We've got, we know how to make um, the book and quill. We know how to make the portfolio so they can pop it right into their Minecraft world for you to watch. So they don't even need PDF downloads and everything. Um, our, our, our intern has, I think, three worlds that he's setting up for you uh, to work. And so Faith is interested in doing this as part of our articulation. Um, and it, it's pretty cool. If you, if you look at it, we have a design process, we have the actual construction, and we have inspection. And in our academics, uh, whoops, we only have one of them published right now. We have this cool Minecraft portfolio, how to make a portfolio in Minecraft. And then we've got the book and quill. We have to get those ones published up for us. So we've got this available uh, probably in another two weeks. We'll have it fully up and running where we have biomes for you. And we've got all that kind of stuff. So that's another fun one we're doing. We're also doing, for those of you who uh, want to be able to see, have your students investigate each other's models. And you know, you, you, sharing files and everything is pretty hard, but you can share the model super easy and put it into our library viewer. Go in and look at it. We've got the orthographic controls. We can set it on wobble so that it looks sort of like it's, it's available to move. We've got lighting. Uh, this is our older version of it. Um, we've got a newer version where students can compare things. So, of course, I had to get a little bit of this. This was for my grandniece. Uh, we've got the dinosaur viewer. So, um, but all the same things. We've got the rotations. We've got the ability to wobble. And I'll tell you, when you put the wobble on, it really looks like that thing's walking around. We got the light, the lighting. Um, but it doesn't matter what we put in here. We can put up to nine models together for quick and easy viewing of the different models so that you can see them. Okay, it does take a central model. So this isn't like an architectural one. But this takes us about maybe four or five hours to load up now. Um, if there's textures, it takes more. So these textures were all done in what's called a Unity pack. So they were all ready for us. Uh, Faith, if you've got a couple of Unity programmers, I know you do. They'll throw the they'll throw those textures on for your students so they can export their models to OBJ or STL, and your Unity programmers can just slap a texture pack on. And, and this is open source. We'll give anybody 
the code that we use to make this with. And your students can put their own stuff in or they can come to us and ask us to load up your models for them. Um, but we really like this viewer is so much better than the stuff you see online. Those free online STL viewers, I don't know if you've ever tried to use them. They're horrid. They're, you, they just got no controls. So, so this is another cool thing. And um, these are all downloadable. So that's the other thing. If you have an environment, Faith, I'm, I'd still love to see some of those environments that your students did at like at the library and throw it, or, or did your students did that? Did your Unity students put it into, in, in, we had been talking that maybe you had some students did a presentation of a library learning environment last semester or last year, and they did it in SketchUp, I think. Oh, yeah. 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 You were saying that you could import a SketchUp model into Unity, right? We haven't yeah. tried that yet. We did a, a room at the Children's Museum. Right. Mm -hmm. So that would be that would be really cool. So this one and now these ones, we haven't exported these ones to a WebGL yet. Um, we we were just not careful enough. And so a lot of these textures on here, when you use it within Unity, the textures work really easily, but when you export, you either need a really good computer or you need to do a really good job with how you've colored things and to keep them small. Or these colors here end up on the wall and these ones here end up on the floor even though the things are in there. So you can do a really, if you got a kind of crummy model, but we would love to do that. Here's another cool one. Do you guys teach forklift driving? Any of you guys have forklift drivers at your thing? Well, so we're making a new space and we're concerned that a forklift driver is gonna have a hard time getting in here. Hey, so Charlie. We, we made a training space. Where you can try to drive your forklift through without hitting anything to see if it's reasonable. And I just, I can do it with my, um, I can do it with the four by four sheet. But when I, um, when I switch over to a different sheet, see we can put on a four by eight sheet or whatever. And I'm trying to think what's, okay, that's, that's there. I don't remember what my, um, I'm trying to I'm trying to remember what my what my keys are to to lift and lower the loads. <laughs> so you're about I'm, you're about to crash that forklift. Yeah, I know. It's like uh anyway. Um so I'm not much of a forklift driver, as you can see. <laughs> but but this took us about four hours to build. So if you have an environment and some models to put in the environment, we can get you in there. And, and it's kind of cool. You can look around, you can do stuff. Um, I think when I first come into it, it tells me what my, um, what my, okay, let's see. Q is raised. Okay, Q is raised the load. There it is, Q. Dump the load. Uh, I don't remember. See, I've got such a bad memory. Okay, but but so we can do stuff like that. There it is. F is to drop the load. Now, if I run over it, bonk, bonk. Oh, 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 look at that! I even kicked it up. Wasn't that cool? Um, so so there's just some fun stuff that we can do. And what we're looking to do is get a group together that wants to create simulated environments for learning. We think that they have some, some value, even when you're not remote online, but as many of the pre-training things that you're looking at. So I'm going to just, that's it for me. I'll kick it open and see if you guys have any questions or comments or 
Well, Randy, first thing, this is Dykus. Tell us again how we as educators get access to this, these different simulators. So, yeah, you email me. Right now, you email me. We are putting together an outward facing website that will allow you guys to interface. And through this semester and the fall and probably the spring, all of this will just be email us and whatever. After that, we're going to a contract education model for the design hub. And you'll need to ask us to put together a training session for like a hundred bucks or something like that, where all the educators get their professional credit for 10 bucks or whatever. And, and we supply it to you and everything, but we're going to be requiring a, probably some five or $10 training fee for that. And it's just our, our, our funding model is changing. We understand that strong workforce will be going away or being greatly reduced so that we won't have that available. And so the funding model is going to be showing that we're doing um, education. So if we can show that we're educating people, we're going to do that. But right now, email me and we can put together a, a cool little group, a Discord group, for those of you who hate Discord but can figure it out. And, uh, and we can just talk about these things, you know, oh, I'd love to have this, I'd love to have that. Um, your, your biology teachers ought to just go, go wacko over this, right? We can put models of DNA in here, models of anything that's central. We're spinning the camera around the object. So if we can spin the camera around the object, we can put it in. And our scale doesn't matter. Ernie, can you put your uh, email in the chat for each of us? Just so yeah. we put it on our fingertips. So what is my... <laughs> Anybody have other questions for Randy or comments about what you're what you're seeing here? I think this is pretty cool. I could definitely use this with my students. There we go. So we do have another capability that I'll show you just really quickly. I'll see if I can get. That's why Discord is so good. I know who sent it to me. Randy, we can't hear it, but we can see it. Okay, well, hold on. So I shared it wrong. Let's see if I can share it correctly. All these different things share so differently. Share computer audio. There we go. The way we think of and practice business and education has abruptly changed. In a world increasingly dependent on virtual calls and webinars, how do we keep pace? How can hands-on learners thrive in a touchless environment? How can a business present a product when the product cannot be passed around the table? The Library Viewer is a solution to the disparity that exists for kinesthetic experience in a socially distant education and business environment. It is a three-dimensional object exploration simulator utilizing the Unity real-time development platform. With the viewer, your hands-on learners can physically manipulate objects to grasp concepts in the way most natural to them, and it provides the students an equal opportunity to learn. Likewise, potential investors can explore your product without you having to waste valuable resources to produce and mail a small number of prototypes to wherever your audience may be seated behind their screens. While other 3D viewers exist, 
They're typically designed with the experienced 3D modeler in mind, adept with a library of memorized hotkeys for the overwhelming possible commands that are ultimately unnecessary for the average user. So, the Design Hub interns work together to create an easy-to-use solution. The library viewer is the product of our efforts. It is characterized by a user-intuitive interface and an emphasis in stimulating socially distant visual and kinesthetic learning, teaching, and presentation. Don't yet have a model of your own to import? Design Hub provides optional supplementary and support services in 3D scanning, modeling, rigging, animating, printing, and painting. Demonstration of the Library Viewer is hosted on the Design Hub website to showcase a library of deliverables completed by Design Hub as examples of our products and services. Contact us today for more information about what we can do to help you and your audience succeed. Thank you. So the, the reason I brought that up is that we, um, we got a bunch of other cool things that we can do and we're always looking to do more. So if you guys need a presentation for your advisory committee or to your board or whatever, uh, that, that program is so cool. It's called Vion, but it's a little bit expensive unless you get the, the cheapo free version, which is not nearly as cool. All of that was done by our interns, of course. And um, hint, hint, we want your students. So I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here saying, we'd love to have your students come and join us. And, and if they're at any Los Rios College, they can actually intern in the design hub. So that's kind of a, if, they, if they're going to any Los Rios College, we can accept them as interns now. Cool. So there we go. I'm sorry. Great presentation, Randy. Any other thoughts for Randy? We got we're running out of time. I got one yep. more thing I want to bring up. You rocked it again. Thank you. Cool. Okay, so there we go. I stopped the share. Huh. <laughs> so we just got a few minutes left. And one of the things Jeff and I had been talking about would be how can we as a community come together and start to share curriculum or lessons that and it'll help us going forward because I really think we're going to see more of this virtual type stuff in our educational classrooms, even when we go back to full time. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'd love to hear anybody's thoughts on how we can maybe curate or have a place to post lessons and help our fellow educators out. Hey, Steve. Tell me, what do you think? Um, I know one thing I'm doing uh, is like, for example, Monday, I'm doing a virtual class. I have a high school student or high school or middle school teacher coming up from Davis, and I'm going to teach a virtual class with my welding robot. So his ag engineering class is going to watch us run the robot and then I'd be able to ask questions, do a virtual class. Maybe that's something we could do in partnership with uh, classes, uh, different subjects. Well, I think there's other people that are on this call, Dan, that might have an interest in seeing what you're doing. So if you could send me anything, I'll share it out to the group. And maybe we could have a presentation from you or we could actually have people contact you directly if they're interested. But I think that's really cool. Yeah, um, another thing we were doing and we've been doing like um, like Zoom conferences with different, I mean, I know I do a uh, conference Zoom with my students, walk them through different uh, programming issues or uh fabrication ideas stuff like that so that's maybe we do that also thank you for that offer that's important to know yeah if you'll send me something i'll be glad to perfect i'll do that Wiggle something up but any of the thoughts that do do you think there's a need out there which would have would have helped you or help you going forward if you knew what other people were doing in certain lessons on certain types of things whether it's been measuring or milling or finishing yeah i have something i want to say um hi everyone, by the way um i teach a, i teach carpentry and digital fabrication at berkeley high school um but i'm also a new teacher and so i think it'd be definitely helpful to just have some references um like i've been coming up with my own 
lesson plans and curriculum, but I think, you know, if there was somewhere I can go to see like, okay, this is how, you know, other people in, in the, you know, in the state of California are teaching this, I think that would, that kind of resource would help me a lot. Thank you for sharing that. You know, because I know even as an experienced teacher, I can learn things from others. There's not always the best or one way to do things. Any other thoughts from anybody else? Any of the other teachers online? Would this be a value of interest, Max or, or Matt or Rob, Ian? If there was like a vault we could put things in, that would really be a, a great place. Even, even if it was on a, a link to the, uh, the website, yeah, that's what we're talking about. Some some type of place. I don't know. I don't know what format we would want the items to be in. I mean, I would probably have to agree on a format or a series of formats that would kind of work that everybody could use. Yeah. I think I've gotten my best ideas from like visiting with people when we've been at different events together, and then, or I visited other people's shops and seeing their equipment and, and just, you know, brainstorming live is a little, for me is better. <laughs> Cause it's sometimes when you get a, a vault of information, it's like overwhelming and it doesn't necessarily include the tools that you have or have your style of how you do things. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think like you kind of need that to get that conversation going unless you're, you happen to be in a meeting with somebody. So it could, it, I think it depends on how it's organized and like if it's got a lot of tags so you can find what you need like by tool and then at least by tool and then maybe by subject area i don't know we'd have to kind of figure out what the tags are so you can find the information you need yeah i'd agree how is, how is it searchable and mm -hmm. tags on content and like, let's say we had a 3D printer, like what are the five things you do to teach to you kids to use the tool, you know, and like the, from being easy to hard and like the laser cutter, what's like the five projects you'd use to get them ramped up on that tool. Or, or even maintenance on each of those tools. Maintenance yeah. And, and like, like usage 101, so they don't break it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and signage for reminders of how to use the tool, all that kind of stuff are things that are on my list that I haven't done yet. <laughs> so. I, I do think that once we get back to quote unquote normal, it would be uh, nice to revisit uh, shop visitations on say Saturdays. Once again, we did that before it all went in the toilet and that was really valuable. I agree with you. That's, I'm with Faith on that one too. And you as you as well, Rob, I learned so much for just seeing other people's shops and how it's laid out or their workspace or what have you. And all their projects lying around. <laughs> lying around, going up and seeing what Dan Turner's doing with all the, all the stuff lying around up there. It's really cool. Any other thoughts? We're almost at the and, bottom of the hour. And the amazing new CTE building at Folsom High School we want to showcase. You know, be there all day Saturday. Would there be a way to, well, when do you think that could be open so we can actually go through and see it? When our school's open. <laughs> and who knows when that's going to be. Every, every district is different. It's amazing. Fingers crossed that it'll be next month. Yeah. And it could happen. I mean, just across the county line, you got shops that are open right now. Randy can create a virtual tour. Well, that's <laughs> what I was thinking. All we need is a model, right? That that's right. As a matter of fact, um, we if if they have a Revit model, uh, Revit goes into Unity pretty easily. And depending on how well they've done their textures and stuff, you can you can do a walkthrough pretty quick. Alicia, do you think your architects who put that together would share their Revit? I don't see why not. And and I know the site has already done things. Tyler has done things, and they've got movies and other stuff already. Um, so yeah, I have a video received from our architect yesterday on the new building. 
for the advisory committee meeting. So I can check on that and see. Yeah, and so. It'd be a great thing to share with the junior high kids that are signing up for classes for next fall. And, and it is cool to be able to walk around in it yourself. On the videos, you're always stuck with what the architect wants to show you. Right. And you don't, you don't get to walk around and see the parts you want to see. Right. Uh, where, whereas if we put it into a sim environment, they can, they can just kind of like cruise around and we, we had one guy do that for our new building and he goes, all the exit signs are in the wrong spot. Yeah. And, and so, but he caught it in design and was able to get all the electrical and everything for the exit signs being in the right spot. So, so it can be really cool to walk around it. Yeah, in the video we saw for the new building, there's drinking fountains we saw, which with COVID, we can't have drinking fountains anymore. So that's going to be replaced. I mean, the plumbing and everything is there, but. Exciting stuff. Any other parting thoughts anybody's got? Anything that they want to share before we ring off? Because I got one last question for the group. Well, so spring break is next month. Isn't it the end of next month for most of you? Would it be wise if we had our next shop talk the beginning of April after spring break? By that time, I think a lot of schools will know what the heck's going on. Yeah, that would work for Elk Grove Unified. Any other thoughts on when we should get together again or what you'd like to see because i think next time when we get into april we should be talking about what we want to do this summer for training boy this is almost like my my zero period class nobody talks <laughs> pull some nah, we have our, go ahead pull some cord over yeah, uh, after the fifth. Has theirs coming up Okay, so why don't we look at maybe the first or second week in April? Probably the week of the 12th would be better because we're just right. coming okay. back on the 6th. We'll be back and be back in the groove and they'll know what's going on. I think either way it'd be fine, but uh, we're, we're, we're supposedly starting uh, with students possibly on April 1st, so we'll see. Yeah, subject to change, I know, so. Oh yeah. Well, thank you all for being here today. I think this has been very informative. I'm excited to hear what Autodesk is doing um, and how they're just keeping supporting, keeping, how they're supporting the Fusion and the Chromebooks and now um, basically downloadable for all of us on any device that she said that has a keyboard, which is exciting. And, and Randy is more than generous and gracious in sharing with what he's got and taking in how we can utilize what they do there in American River and how it can benefit our programs, promoting what we do and also engaging our students. So thank you all. Thank you all for joining. Any other parting thoughts before Jeff stops the recording? Thank you, hey, everyone. Steve. Thank you. Hey, Steve. Thanks. Yeah.